My name is Andrew Bice. I spent the last eight years riding a swell as a special warfare combatant crewman. I've had moments where I felt like I've been riding on tops of waves and others where I feel pinned to the ocean floor under the whitewash. I've held many titles in my life, son, husband, father, operator. Join me as I venture into a whole new role, this time as a civvy. Welcome to Civvies, a podcast by MetroStar. <laughs> Hello, welcome to uh, today's episode of Civvies. I have the privilege and honor to be with Ashley, a part of the Honor Foundation, which I went through. Um, I think when I was going through that, she didn't realize she'd be stuck with me for the rest of her life. And I think I've Facts. taken her to a new place of hell. Um <laughs> Kept you very busy. Um, that being said, awesome. Ashley, uh, thank you for taking the time to be here today. And uh, before we get into the organization and what you actually do and, and what you provide to uh, men and women of service, um, I'd like to kind of hear your story and how you got to the Honor Foundation. Yeah, easy. Um, so I, before I started the Honor Foundation, I actually started as a volunteer, but my professional background, I went to Old Dominion University, got a degree in business, started actually as an internship at a staffing firm, and then worked there for eight years after graduating from college. Um, for those who aren't familiar with the staffing industry, essentially I spent two years as a full cycle life recruiter, um, essentially identifying candidates to place at customers. Uh, we were a third party hiring firm. So essentially a company would come to you and say, Hey, we need X, Y, Z. And you're like, I'll go find that for you. Yep. And then you put them, you give them a job. Exactly. Yeah. So I was uh, for two years identifying the candidates. So phone screening, reviewing resumes, interviewing candidates in person, checking references, getting them submitted, prepping them for interviews, uh, with our clients. And then, um, help helping sec accept offers on their behalf. Um, so I did that for two and a half years and then I moved into wait, stop before this is you actually checked, uh, references. Yeah. Have you ever heard anybody talk negatively about their references? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't know. Sorry. You can go ahead. <laughs> That's Just, like a thing. Yeah, watch out who you put on there because they actually will contact. Totally. Okay. And I can tell if it's your best friend from high school, for sure. Which is probably always going to be one person on there. Like, uh, hey, it's yeah. my best buddy. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, go on. Sorry. Sorry <laughs> to interrupt. I was like, <laughs> no. It's maybe I would have changed some things for mine. No, I'm joking. Um, so I got, after that, I did, um, I worked five and a half years in business development sales. So I was responsible for identifying companies at that time I was in Hampton roads, um, and went out and would find companies to say, Hey, utilize our hiring services. Um, so finding companies, consulting them, convincing them to use our recruiting team. And I would get companies, um, to essentially give us open positions. And then I ran a team of up to seven recruiters. Oh, so wow. I would bring in the positions and then get with my team and say, Hey, we're looking for X, Y, Z. They would go find the candidates, present them to me. And then we would get them set up for interviews and then employ them. Um, at that time, I was probably doing the hiring consulting for 25 to 30 different companies in my portfolio, um, a wide variety of industries, business services, financial services, construction services, government contractors, really those corporate headquarter like yeah. type functions. Uh, that's crazy. So essentially, you kind of got a big taste of the whole process, how it works, you know, talking about a wide array of fields to place people into. So there's kind of some discussion on, you know, what the company actually needs. So, yeah. you know, each company needs a certain flavor or each position, you know, I need somebody with brains for this one. I need somebody who can talk with this one, whatever the situation may be to be in that space for such a long time has kind of guided you almost to, to the honor foundation. We're not there yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. So essentially it did give me a nice bird's eye view of what our employers looking for when hiring talent. And because I didn't get paid until I got somebody in the seat, I had a lot of skin in the game of wanting people to get jobs. Right. Yeah. So that I could get a uh, commission around paid. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, one of my customers or a company that I was targeting at the time, 
was helping put together mock interviews for the Honor Foundation when it first had opened in Virginia Beach. This had to be like 2016, 17. Um, and just reached out to myself and one of my coworkers and was like, hey, we need a bunch of people to come and help do interviews professionally with a group of transitioning special operators. Um, and I was intrigued by that. My uncle's a retired SEAL and um, he had a tougher transition. So I called him and I was like, hey, have you heard of the Honor Foundation? Like they had, I just want to make sure it was legit. Yeah. And he was like, I haven't, but we need a lot of help. So <laughs> like, you just go do it. Look at me. Please go help everyone yeah. you can. And so that's how I started. I went and did mock, uh, mock interviews one night and I was like, wow, what a really cool way uh, to give back utilizing what I get paid to do to help a group of people that are close to my family. And my uncle's retired SEAL. I have a bunch of friends um, that are in the military. My childhood best friend, Lauren, went to the Naval Academy. Yeah. Um, my cousin, Alex, is a Marine. Uh, my cousin, Justin, um, is actually still active duty Army. So it's kind of my people. Yeah. You know? No, that's awesome. I think, uh, you know, I talked to to some, some people, you know, now that I've been out, I talked to some people. And um, one of the things that kind of comes up is, oh, man, I like you know, I thought about doing something like that or joining the service or some form or fashion. But I'm like, dude, that's fine. You got your own life experiences doing your thing. You know what I mean? Like you can, the fact that you're here talking to me and like helping me out or something, like don't discredit where you're at now. And the fact that you can still help vets no matter where you're at. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. dude, you're still doing great stuff. Totally. Like, think about if you did join, maybe you would have done something and did something totally different. You know what I mean? So like check yourself a little bit too. So. Yeah. Thanks to all those people out there helping, you know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. Um, yeah, and that's one thing I like to say is like, I have not been in the service myself and what I hope to bring to the conversation is just perspective from an employer um, and what they're looking for to be able to help veterans like understand our side and that recruiters are not the enemy, right? We <laughs> want you to get the job. Uh, we want to fill that position. You know, third parties can get hired and hiring managers want to fill their position so that they can have the people on their team they need in order to hit their customer goals and obviously drive revenue. Right. And I'm sure they don't want to, when they find a potential candidate, they don't want to waste the time, you know, don't waste the time by them not filling that position. And then you go back to square one anyway. So yeah, they obviously want you to do well. Yeah. Maybe on the other side of it, you just don't see it. Exactly. Yeah. So um, the Honor Foundation, you're there now, correct? Yes. And the whole point of the organization is to... Help uh, transitioning special operators identify what's next for them. You know, whether that is full-time job, um, starting their own business, going back to school, like we're just here to guide them in transition in regards to the career aspect um, of transition. So we put them through a three month program that's set up like an executive MBA twice a week at night. Um, we have several locations throughout the country, six in-person campuses. Um, I'm the director of people here for the Virginia beach location. Um, and then we have two virtual campuses as well so that we can help folks that maybe aren't you know, overseas or in yeah. a remote lo area that still have access to our program. And we just really focus on getting prepared to identify your next career. Yeah. I know. I'm, I'm glad you guys are growing and, and expansion in all the places and all the right places. Right. Because you, what you just tapped on to, um, we'll get into here in a sec as far as the taps program, but, um, you know, people can be in different spots of their military career deployed. Um, some people range on how much time they have before they get out. Right. So being able to flex and kind of help people no matter where they are before they get out is obviously the best time to do it. Right. Yeah. So they can be prepared, but just to be able to flex and have the options to do that is awesome. Um, because some, some of us, you know, it's kind of there in the back of our head, maybe whatever, a couple years back, but, or, you know, I'm not ready to do this yet. So you kind of push it off to the side. And then before you know it, you're, you're in a tough spot. So, um, back to the taps thing, which is a mandatory, um, class that's provided for military before they get out. It's a week long. I think. Um, yeah, I think so too. It was, it was such a blur, honestly, when I took <laughs> it and what I took away from it, I don't even know what stuck with me to be honest, which is crazy. I know it's, I'm not bashing the organization because they're trying, it's tough. Um, but to say you're completely prepared in a week, I would say, I don't, I don't think that hits the mark and I'm sure there's other vets out there who feel the same way. Yeah. 
Well, and that's why we're here, right? Um, because that is the thought is that it, it doesn't hit the mark. Um, it's just different, right? It TAPS is the same program for everybody um, that gets out of the military, no matter how much time you've done as well or where you're at in your current career um, or, you know, what community you come from. We are specifically tailored to special operations and, you know, we also really want people to prepare ahead of time, I would say is a big difference. Like we'll take people up to 18 months, two years before they're getting out. Um, and then we definitely have people who are like six months away <laughs> or less. Yeah. Um, but we want them to start thinking ahead and also, you know, figure out, you know, who were you before you joined the military? What's important to you right now? What is that phase of life you're in? It is really going to depend on what you end up doing like career wise. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely a good way to transition into this. So, um, in the military, from boot camp, you kind of get indoctrinated to certain values and beliefs. Then you spend the next X amount of years kind of shaping you, who you view yourself as, or maybe your persona around this, you know, niche group or specific job. So you kind of get, I guess, I don't want to say closed minded, but you kind of get focused on kind of what you're doing right in the moment. And then right before, you know, you're released to the world and all ties are cut off. It's like, holy crap, I don't even know what's out there. I don't even know what I want and I don't know where to fall to be like in the best spot. So um, with that, with the Honor Foundation um, and no matter where you are, I think one of the most important parts is kind of doing a lot of Mm -hmm. self-reflection. I know in the program, there's some things that we do as far as that. Um, I think, I mean, do you think that's obviously like a major piece is like, Hey, why do you want to do something? And who, like, who are you? Like, that's, that's so tough. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think it's like in the military, you're you're told what you're going to do, where you're going to be and when you're going to be there for. So you don't get a lot of choice in that. Right. And so the civilian world provides you a lot of options and choice. And I, I sometimes think that there's like a disconnect of like, all oh, of people look at me like, well, what should I do? I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm not. They want the answer. Yeah. Told, yeah. And I will never give someone the answer because one, I don't want that level of responsibility. And two, the answer is already within you. I'm just helping pull it out of you. Yeah. Right. Um, and so it's just thinking about there is a lot of options, there's a lot of choice. And like, you're not going to know unless you start talking to people and having conversations with them. Yeah. A hundred percent. I can even, you know, one of the, one of the key things and one of the most important things that I found going through it was networking, right? You just need to reach out no matter if it's a crazy job. You're like, heck no, I don't want to do that. Just talk to the person, keep an open mind. And then you're like, whoa, I got something out of that. I never thought I would have, but two, some of the, I guess I've been in the same spot where somebody's like looking for something, but I'm like, Dude, you know the answer. No matter what I'm saying, you're either going to use it as fuel to get what you want originally, or you're going to use what I say, like that guy's an idiot, and go to what you want to do anyway. So it's like it's there. You know what you want. It's just taking that step and going after it. Yeah, a lot of my conversations are like where someone's like, "I'm thinking about this or that. What do you think?" And I'm like, "What is your gut telling you?" And I can usually hear in their tone which one they're more interested in. They just often just need a sounding board, right? Yeah, and people look at me as like someone with like expert advice in the hiring process, but I'm never telling them something they didn't already know. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, to that own self be true rock and roll, man. (laughs) (laughs) Gotcha. Um, (laughs) no, that's awesome. So like, uh, with this, I know, um, the networking piece is so important. Um, one of the things we do with that is just grabbing a cup of coffee. You know what I mean? And at least what I can break down from that is it's kind of taking out I don't want to say the seriousness, but like the heaviness that comes with, holy crap, this is a job interview I have to have. Like, obviously you want to look presentable or you can look like me. That's fine too. Um, You know, it kind of takes the stress away from it to where it's like, hey, we're just going to talk, have a conversation, just see where it goes. Yeah. I've actually done some cups of coffee here. Have you? I like this setup. Like, yeah. I like I'll the vibe here. Can I have, um, I'll just do a black coffee. Make that too, please. Make actually, sit over yeah. here so we can see the, ooh, what is that? Cinnamon. Wow. 
Caleb, what's up, man? What's up? Told you I'd be back. It's wild. Like on LinkedIn, you know how many people I talk to? That's something to think about too, is we go... It's hard being popular. I guess so. I never, thought I, I never thought See, I had that Everyone's problem. wedding, same thing. That's true. You're there <laughs> with a new dress for every wedding. Um, yeah, but we get so... Um, you know, while we're in, they're like, don't post anything on anything. And then right before you get out, they're like, you need a LinkedIn account, man. It's important. And then I'm like, all right, whatever. I guess I'll roll with that. Next thing you know, it's probably the same too, watching people kind of, I guess, feel more comfortable and then like watch the transformation happen too. It's kind of, you got to see some patterns there, right? As far as like, oh, this oh, guy's, yeah. I've seen this before. I know how yeah. this is going to work out. Well, it's like after story night, I think is when everyone's like, Okay, I'm not have to compete against these people because everyone shares something funny or vulnerable, and I think it just like evens like the playing field. Whereas right. like I feel like the first month everyone's kind of like on edge, getting to know each other, and not well, comfortable like, yet. You? Maybe like are you gonna take that job from me? Oh like, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I know you're gonna be going for the same. I'm spot. better than you. Yeah, yeah. I love it. The personalities, everyone's got their own personality and it's funny to see, honestly. Mm -hmm. It just takes a while to get those walls down. Yeah. And Henry's awesome. There's so yeah. many good people like go through the program. I never would have met, I never would have met like if I didn't go through it. Like Chad, down. like we just talk every day. I, I love seeing who like the who, friendships that develop from the cohort. Like yeah. there was one in the last cohort. He's like, yeah, I went to this guy's like baby barbecue like and he's like i would never thought we'd be friends <laughs> yeah and I'm like celebrating him having a child <laughs> look at me now yeah his work at night is tough in that regard yeah 100 percent. even going through the program it's kind of you want to like stick through it because it's important and it helps you where you need to be so you got to commit right mm -hmm. but even doing that on top of your whatever you have going on because mm -hmm. it's at night yeah. You're ready to turn it off, mm -hmm. but then you got to re-engage. Mm -hmm. I would say that, and it's also like getting the information before you are all of a sudden in the interview and you have no idea if you actually want to work there or not. Uh, or if you want to do that job role that you interviewed for, um, it allows you the opportunity to ask really good questions, uh, that are to gather information and to try to understand like, is finance or consulting or business development something that I would be excited to do? Or is this something where it's like Sunday scaries, man, I don't want to go to work tomorrow. Yeah. Right. And hopefully you're able to identify that before you're actually in the job. Right. With that, is there like, do you see like a common trend of where men and women usually end up like going through the program? Is there like, I know that's probably a loaded question because you probably have outliers, but um, that, that's honestly the hardest question that I get. And that's what every employer wants to know when they come to the honor foundation and they either want to volunteer their time, hire or donate. It's like, where do these people go? And it is tough. And like, honestly, when I came here, I was like, Oh, this is gonna be so easy. Like they're going to do like five things. Right. Because they're all coming from a similar background. background yeah. You would think not true. Couldn't be farther from the <laughs> truth. And it keeps my job interesting. Um, you know, I look at your cohort and I know you had you know, John and Chad on here. John owns his own Beast. coaching business, stayed here locally. Chad works in a remote tech job and marketing. You're in tech and business development in Nova. You have someone in construction up in Boston, government contracting. You know, there's someone waiting on a offer from Wall Street, you yeah. know, and then just like everything in between because we teach you about choice and preferences. Some people, location is most important. They want to stay where they most recently were because they have kids and they want them to grow up in those school systems or they want to go back home wherever yeah. that is or they're just going to go where the job takes them. So it's like, it's hard to say. And then even if you look at it from like a community, right? So from your community, um, looking at where those folks are now, it's all over the map, yeah, right? hundred percent. You're in technology. You have someone that just got a job in startup, someone that owns his own construction business. A Another folks. buddy who's trying to be a ski bum and there collect maple syrup. <laughs> it, that's new. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Honestly. But yeah, you have, you have folks that are working on their MBA and just all over the map. And so it's hard to even say. There's, there's like the this pattern. certain pattern. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. I mean, that's cool to hear too, because, Hey, you don't have to lock yourself into the idea of what everyone thinks you should do. You know exactly. what I mean? Like 
world's your oyster, man. Go after it. Well, that's the, that's the thing. When people come through this program and they're like, I'm just going to contract. It's like, why? Like that you're playing small, honestly, in yeah, my opinion. Like an like, easy fallback maybe. For sure. And yeah. keep that as your back pocket option. But I don't think you're spending that much time in a three month program to just do something you, are, you know you can already do. Right. And so we really Unless teach Unless they them, really love it, which is fine. Yeah, totally. But like you said, you got to be ready. Even there's so much out there. You got to get got to get out there too and see what, yeah. see, what, see what the world has to offer. Um, you know, we talk about like, okay, location, um, you know, there's like kind of, I guess the five pillars, I guess, of things to think about when you're making that next move. Um, I can never remember them obviously, but, uh, <laughs> I was a star student though. Definitely. Um, yeah. But for those five things, um, maybe you can kind of share some wisdom just with people to think, think about, you know? Yeah. Well, it's thinking about what's most important to you, right? You know, is it the location of your position? Is it, you know, the amount of money? Is it work-life balance? Is it what your actual job function is, you know, or is it the culture of the organization, right? And you usually can't have all of them. Some people feel like they do. Um, right. But it's really focused on like what's most important to you and it's going to be different for each person. And I think it also goes back to like what phase of life you're in. Yeah. So maybe just kind of prioritizing what you're looking at, maybe just with those kind of five pillars there, prioritizing what's the most important. And then I guess weighing the options of what's out there, what what you have in front of you. And maybe saying, all right, this one hits what I'm looking for with, you know, work-life balance or money, whatever it is. Like maybe this one might take a little, this one might be more important to me right now, this mm-hmm. job than the other one. Yeah. No, that's good. Um, Cause I feel like so many people get lost with themselves too. You know, they kind of get in their head and then I'll say this, you know, anyone, <laughs> anyone will probably back me up on this, but as far as, you know, um, the game of getting hired and seeing what's out there, it's kind of, it's daunting and it, it weighs on you because it's such an emotional time for you to be leaving your job, whatever, your friends, purpose, whatever the hell. Yeah, it's still out there, but in the moment you don't really realize that, right? It's like, hey, I'm cut off from what I've known, the military. And then now like look at the resume game, like everything's got to match you know, you know what they're looking for. So match your resume. And then you do these interview processes, which take up sometimes up to a month. You have four rounds, you do cognitive tests even. And by like, I mean, yeah, it's good to hear no, because it's free, you know, Chad and I had a conversation about that, but um, it's daunting. And you, I don't want to say you lose hope or faith when you're like, dude, nobody's like, how do I not have a job yet? I'm not a bad person. I'm, I feel like I will put out, I'll work so hard. Like, I can contribute. You just got to give me a chance. Um, do you think, I don't know, like as far as like, I don't want to blame hiring managers. It's not them at all, right? But I think it's just the process and it it's heavy. I don't know. Do you get a lot of people who come back and are like, or even in the, in the midst of it, like, this sucks. I don't know. Yeah. Like they lose faith or like, hey, I am going to just go contract or I am going to re-up. I don't know. I, I feel people do feel those feelings for sure. Like, right, they're out of their comfort zone. They're not the expert. They're not the decision maker in the process um, when maybe they currently are that. And so you're kind of like the new guy again, right, trying to earn your spot. Um, is it a game? If it's a game, then you got to play to win. Right. And I think what I can bring to the conversation is the perspective of you are competing. It's not personal if you didn't get that job, usually, unless, you know, you said something inappropriate, you didn't show up well, you didn't dress professionally, you're late, like that's on you. Like you can't blame the employer or the hiring manager. And yeah, it it is unfortunate that it can take time, um, to get into that. But you, I tell a lot of people like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Like they're not putting all their eggs in your basket. I think a misconception is that when I am talking to transitioning veterans, they forget that they're competing against other people for that one job. And they're not only competing against other vets, they're competing against maybe civilians that have that experience. And so if you didn't get the job again, it's not personal. But you have to play to win and you have to, you know, put your A game on. And if you don't tailor your resume or you don't prep for that interview, 
and you just expect to be hired because you were whatever. Yeah. Like based on your old title, which yeah, is gone. Which is confusing for me sometimes that behavior, because I don't think anyone that got a contract to go to Coronado rolls up there like, Hey, I'm here. Like, I'd like my pin now. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, you had to earn it. You're welcome. Yeah. I've arrived. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm here. And- <laughs> the rumors are true. <laughs> and so like, why are we doing that? You know, when it's you, just because you apply to a job, does it mean that you automatically should get it right? That it's just taking that earning that spot and applying it to this and like being on your A game. Yeah. And you talk about this too a little bit. I know we kind of, we kind of got into it on the back end as far as you just talked about, you're competing with civilians and I made a comment and it was like, Hey, you get to hire one, right? You get a person with a college degree or a person who just got out with a DD-214, that's your separation work paper, right? So you have one person. And yeah, that conversation got wild because everyone's like, you need a college, get a college degree in the military. To get crazy. Right. I'm like, hey, that's not the point of this conversation. Yeah. The point of this conversation is you have somebody who just spent four years in the service, or you have somebody who spent four years at a college, you know? And I think that brought like a lot of attention, not in a bad way, but... Um, you had people on both sides, I guess. I don't know where you stand or how you feel, you know, yeah. like if so, you're looking into that. Totally. And I remember that conversation and I know how I personally feel is that I hire character over skill set. You can train somebody. But when I've hired, it's been for positions that don't have like a certain specific skill set that you have to have, right? Like no operator is going to become a software engineer tomorrow without any education or skill set, Right if they need someone to hit the ground running. But there are a lot of jobs out there that hiring managers are trying to fill that if it's the right culture where they're willing to invest their time and money into training and onboarding someone effectively, you don't have to have someone with that exact customer service or sales or operations background. You can take a chance on someone that has the intangibles and the personality and that's willing to learn and grind. And that is exactly what a transitioning veteran has to bring, you yeah. know? And so I'm fortunate that I worked for an organization prior to coming here that we really focused on hiring good people. And, but then you have to take the time to train them and put them in the job. And so personally, you know, when I'm hiring for my team, um, you know, if I were to make a hiring decision, I don't, I'm not as worried about, do you have a bachelor's degree? It's more so like, who are you and how do you show up? Yeah. Um, and I, I mean that like my, one of my best hires at my last organization, he was actually my last hire, like wasn't my typical hire. I usually hired recent college grads that had some internship experience or they were an athlete or were in a fraternity or, a sorority that showed that not only were they focused on school, but other things as well. Extracurricular. Yeah, totally. Too, yeah. Um, but then some uh, resume came across my plate that I would have not hired based on his paper. Like he worked, he didn't finish his degree. He worked in a kitchen at a restaurant, right? But he came highly referred by a top producer, right? So he didn't just apply online and hope for the best. Yeah. He networked his way in. And then when I met with him, like he just had that, outgoing personality. He could hold a conversation. He was really intrigued. He was well-prepared research and he really demonstrated like why I should give him an opportunity. I could tell he had a chip on his shoulder and I was like, I can work with this. Um, and so I hired him, I gave him an opportunity and I, I hired him over a recent college graduate because of the way he showed up in the interview. And you know, I knew it was for a customer service sales-based recruiting yeah. job. And all you have to do is be able to talk to people um, and, you know, dot your eyes or not. Yeah. Cross your T's. No, you nailed it. Yeah. You nailed it. Got it. <laughs> um, and he was awesome, you know, and he was one of my best hires. And like, I think that's a really great recipe of like, they don't have to have this. And like, if you're a vet and you see a job description that says must have X years of this in a bachelor's degree, like, but you have more years of experience in doing what you do. Like, don't count yourself out, try, but I wouldn't just only apply for jobs, right? It's that networking and getting people to speak for you on your behalf and refer you in as well. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, you guys have always talked about, you know, you're going to submit your resume in this giant candidate pool of like online and I don't want to say it always gets lost in the, in the shuffle. It usually does. And then when you have that, that somebody who can be like, hey, I'll help you. 
you know, I'll, I'll put this in front of the right people or I'll vouch for you. I think that carries so much weight because I still currently get rejection emails for positions I applied for, you know, over six months ago. That's crazy. And I'm like, I don't need, I'll be honest. That's on the, cam- that's on the company. Like that's, that's. Well, I don't know. I don't even remember applying to some of these places and I was like, Whoa. <laughs> I didn't know I was still in the running. Look at that. Yeah. You know, I'm still out the there. I guess. like floating in space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Martians are going to get it next. So who knows? Maybe I'll get a job with them. Um, I will say in the three months of the program, there's never one time that we're like, you know, it's a really good idea is like, just take your resume and jam it into 50 different job application tools. Yeah, like, it's going to work out for you just fine. Don't and I will say like when I work with our alumni, because a big part of my role at the Honor Foundation is working with the alumni, right? Since we have people that are coming through the program that aren't getting out right away, maybe they take the program, learn, and then they want to tap back around six months later when they're actually like within that 90 day window of getting out and want, you know, that one-on-one coaching and development. Um, and I find a lot of folks get frustrated and I'm trying to figure out like, okay, where are we stuck in the hiring process? Like, are you not getting interviews or are you getting interviews and not getting offers and then try to go from there? But sometimes people will get, I think it's like fear-based decisions of, man, oh my God, I'm getting out. Like, what do I do? Like, let me just send my resume out a ton of places and mm-hmm. then they're not getting the results they want. And I'm like, all right, off the hamster wheel we go. Like we never talked about that was a good strategy uh, or totally. way to do it. I think I'd probably found myself there. I'm sure you can, you can attest to that, but I started freaking out, I guess a little bit more. Cause I wanted, I wanted to have the answer or the solution to me getting out before I got out which is interesting to think about. So then I start to, you know, you start to get in your head. And yeah, you start to grip like, the bag. Oh, crap. I'm screwed now. Guess what? Yeah. I'm going to spray and pray. Here's my resume everywhere. Somebody please, you know, like versus the, if I probably got into some of those places, I wouldn't have been happy like at all. Like I know that like looking at it, I'm like, thank God I didn't get into those places. Or, you know, I'm glad I kind of got rejected with some some of the opportunities I had just because where I'm at now. Um because there's there's a stat out there. It's like, I don't know what percentage it is, but it, for a veteran, after they get hired to their first job within that first year, there's like a high number of like, hey, this isn't a good fit for me. I'm going to I'm going to switch. Right. Mm-hmm. Which isn't I mean, as an employer, you don't want that. Right. You want to no. bring somebody on. Yeah. You want to help them grow, too. Mm-hmm. And you want them part of the team. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. There's it's heavy, man. And the emotions and. It's stressful. It's all in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely stressful. And like, especially, you know, if you have a family, right, that you're also responsible for and it's not just yourself, that's yeah. like an added layer of pressure and, you know, having to relocate school systems, doctors, like all that adulting stuff that yeah. also comes along <laughs> with it is just like not awesome. Yeah, um, for sure. That it can cause a lot of anxiety and stress and, you know, for sure. Yeah. I'll say this too. You talked about kind of the uh, the alumni and kind of leaning on that. I think we've THF has almost reached cult like status, like as far as reaching out to people in the organization who have gone through in the past. You know, I'll show up occasionally. I know Chad will show up. We'll be in flip flops showing up to um, you know graduation and things like that. So I think one of the biggest things too is being able to talk to people who've been in that space or they've been out. And they're happy. They're fine. You know, just Mm -hmm. the community is strong and it's in, it's in a good spot. Yeah. I think, and I think it's helpful for people to hear from people like themselves that were just in their position six months ago, a year ago to provide a little bit of like, okay, if that guy figured it out, like I can, you know, yeah, if Um, I made it, anyone can make it. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, That's that's it. That's the (laughs) testimony right there. (laughs) I'm just kidding. But yeah, it's important and it's like, it's like a warm cup of coffee, right? It's not, you know, ice cold of like this hiring manager, why they want to meet with me. And I, you know, I feel like people can be a little bit more like themselves, share stories, shared sentiment, mm-hmm. mutual friends. It's just, you know, you get what I'm trying to say. And there's a little bit less judgment and people feel like they can be a little bit more at ease when talking to somebody like from their community yeah. or that's been in their shoes and walked their path. Just, yeah, that connection piece, they can, mm-hmm. it rings true and it kind of helps some barriers and walls come down. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people want to be able to pay it forward. Like, uh, you know, a hundred percent because we them. just came from that space. Yeah. We know how crappy it is. I don't want anyone to feel that. Totally. Which is awesome. 
but I grew a lot from it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's exciting to see where you're at now. Yeah, that's funny. Um, as far as, you know, people who need to or looking to get involved or reach out, um, is there a best way to look into the organization or contact anyone? Yeah, we're, I mean, we have all of our social media profiles, LinkedIn, um, our website, you can fill out a form and submit and ways to get involved, reach out to me directly. If there's questions, um, you know, if you're an employer, hiring manager, or if, even if you're a veteran, that's like, Hey, I'd love to do those cup of coffee chats. Um, you know, we always need the help for sure, especially as we grow and expand. Which is happening. Yes. Yeah. So that's awesome. Well, thanks, Ashley. I greatly appreciate you taking the time. I know you and, and the team over there, Janie, Stephanie, you guys have been a huge help. And, you know, from me and my family, because you by you taking care of me, it hasn't only just helped me, it's helped my family. And now I can help other people as well. So it's kind of the thing that keeps paying forward. So, you know, a testament to, to y'all and what you do, like that's huge. And I can be more thankful that our kind of our past intertwined and, and here we are. So, yeah. I love to see you paying it forward and trying to help people and bring us into the fold. It's awesome. Yeah. Keep killing it and doing good work. Thanks. No problem. Civvies is proudly brought to you by producer and sponsor MetroStar, a global digital services and solutions provider. Life transitions are hard without the pressure of finding a new job. Veterans at MetroStar have built a close-knit group within the organization and are eager to help you on your new path. To explore career opportunities and life at MetroStar, visit metrostar.com slash veterans. We'll link that and other career pages in the show notes. Thanks for joining us on today's episode of Civvies, presented by MetroStar. If you want to learn more about Civvies or MetroStar, just want to reach out. Check out the links in the description. I'll catch y'all on the next one. <laughs> look at this. Ashley, whenever you start to get crazy, just look over at me. I'm your rock. <laughs> <laughs> I would have never thought that was. I'm your, I'm I'm your comfort blanket. You did it's THF, me. and how much you annoyed me. What? <laughs>